thing. Just a way to hit another note without really striking it. There's so many ways that the human voice can enunciate a note. You know, depending on the word you're singing, it, it has a really hard start to it, or it it sort of almost swells into it. And I think when you're playing a solo, especially for guitar players, horn players, whatever, you're trying, you're you're doing all the things you can to mimic the human voice. So I could picture someone hitting a note and then just sort of, there's just a touch of an extra enunciation that sort of scoops into the same note. That's kind of what I think that move is. I'm only striking the first note. not super good at those. That one wasn't bad. That's hard, especially with 11s on a Strat. Dang it. I'm very much an anti-exercise, anti-work, like guitar workout kind of guy. I just want everything to be super musical. And I feel like, in my experience, the people that I listen to, the ones who play, spend a lot of their time practicing a bunch of exercises, uh, the, the the playing, when it's time to play a song with other people, it doesn't necessarily sound super musical. I hesitate to make a blanket statement like that. I just think the tendency is there for things to come out less than musical if you're constantly like playing these arpeggio exercises that you learned from somebody on YouTube or, or whatever, you know. It's amazing that there are so many resources. But since I started getting into the YouTube guitar world, I notice like the ads that I get when I'm watching my own videos, because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> the ads that I get are like, why didn't anybody teach this this way? Or the one trick to unlocking whatever. And it just reminds me of doctors hate this one trick that this grandmother learned, you know, or whatever. And it's just so clickbaity. And I get that you got to play that game to some extent. People always ask me about teaching, they ask me about lessons and all this stuff. And what, what do you need to practice? And I have a one word response. Songs. That's it. Practice songs. Learn songs top to bottom. If you want to play music with other musicians in the styles that you like to listen to, go learn those songs. Don't learn the techniques within the performance of those songs. Learn the songs as a whole. When you learn techniques and you learn exercises, you're getting all of the, um, all of the physicality without context. So to me, like the song is the king of everything. Right. So if you want to play music with other people and you want to get better at the guitar with that in mind, learn songs. I used to learn entire records. I would learn every guitar part on an entire record and I would write number charts for that whole record. There's never a thing that, you know, unlocked the fretboard or took my solos to the next level. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I think all that's great, you know? I'm not ragging on the guys who have far larger channels and far more successful YouTube presences than I have, you know? That stuff just never worked for me. I've thought about starting a series on the channel where I watch guitar lesson videos and, and like try to learn what the guy's teaching and see if I think it's actually helpful. It would be kind of a uh, like session player reacts, you know? Oh gosh, that stuff make, that, that's well outside of my comfort zone, but I understand that to really take this thing somewhere that I've got to play that game to some extent, you know? And my, my hope is that this gets so big at one point that all of you who are with me right now are like, man, he sold out. I remember when it was just, you know, it was just him tracking on sessions and, and all the insights that he gave. And now he's doing gear reviews and whatever and has 100,000 subscribers. I mean, that would be amazing. I don't think that my little niche that I've carved so far alone is going to get me, you know, to that big of a subscribership. And I'm fine with that. You know, I hope y'all are. I will I will be playing the YouTube game to some extent. One of my last videos, a little clickbaity in the headline, my absolute favorite strat, strat pickups. Can you guess what they are? You know, that gets views. I mean, people are interested. People love talking about gear. And if I'm honest and I look at my most popular videos, they are all dealing with gear. 
every single one of them. I think my highest viewed video is still less than 3,000 views at this point. And it's, uh, I think it's it has to do with this guy. I did a couple videos of this, my first impressions, and then using it at work. And then I did two videos on the Descendant tailpiece on my uh, Jazzmaster, kind of a before and after, and what I like about it. I still maintain that it solved all of my issues in one fell swoop. I didn't have to change the geometry of the guitar by sticking a shim in the neck and then having to readjust the pickups to see the strings and hear the strings in the same way, you know, changing the bridge and all this stuff. I, that just feels wrong to me on a Fender. Gibson's, you know, Les Paul kind of tucks in weird and then the neck comes out at an angle and it comes back some and it's got a certain feel to the way it is. Fenders are just flat and straight, right? Everything's straight and that feels normal to me. If I shim the neck and it comes back the way a Gibson does, that's just weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably me, but all that to say, those four videos, the two about the Rev and the two about the Descendant, they have more views than, they have more than double the views of any of my Overdub Sessions videos. And so if I'm honest, I'm gonna have to play that game to some extent and hopefully, it, you know, doesn't piss any of you guys off who are just here for the the quality overdubs, you know.